Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Andrew Clark, and if you've ever felt like your guitar solos were a little bit boring, repetitive, or maybe they just lacked a little extra something, then today's lesson is for you. And that's because today's video is about 10 different ways to add more spice to your guitar solos. If you guys do wanna grab the lesson notes, they'll be available over on my Patreon, or you can hit the join button below this video to become a channel member and download them. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the very first technique that I wanna take a look at is sliding. And sliding is great because it's really easy to kind of start getting the hang of, although it's very hard to master. Uh, it's pretty easy to start incorporating early on. So essentially, the technique, all we're doing is we are gonna be picking one note and instead of going to the next note and picking that next note, we're just gonna slide up without picking. And if you do it properly, it should still come through as a pretty loud note uh, so you want to do it quite quickly, but let's start here. We're going to use the A minor pentatonic scale slash C major, uh, the standard one that we pretty much use for everything, this one right here. And we're just going to start on this note right here, this C note. And all we're going to do is we're going to pick it. And we're going to slide it up two frets to a D note. So it looks like this. And the key here is to do it so that it sounds like two clean notes. So if you go too slow, you'll lose a little bit of momentum, so a little bit of that sustain, and obviously you're gonna hear that note in between. You don't wanna hear that note in between. You don't even wanna recognize it. You want it to sound like this. Just like that. And what you'll notice is when I'm doing it, this small slide, so a two fret slide like this, it's mostly happening all in my hand and my wrist. So if you watch what's happening here, the action is pretty much, I'm using actually the, my thumb here on the neck as a, kind of like a fulcrum. So it's coming from that point and it's not moving, right? As far as where it's stuck on the fretboard. However, I'm pivoting off of it to slide the hand up. Now, if I wanted to go a further distance with my slide. And again, this is why it becomes a little bit more challenging. Well, I'm not gonna be able to do that, right? My hand is gonna have to actually move because if I keep going, my thumb's not gonna stay in the same spot. And when you start doing this, it changes from being a hand motion that's mostly coming from kind of a twist of the wrist and it becomes a more of an arm motion. So for example, if I were to slide from this note and let's say I wanted to go all the way up to this note right here, up to this E note. Well, for that to work, if I keep my thumb where it is, it's just not gonna work out. It's not gonna sound good. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna move my whole arm, right? And this is the more challenging version of this technique. So if you're just starting out, you really just wanna focus on doing those shorter ones two, maybe three fret slides. Because if you start doing bigger ones, you actually need a way more muscle memory uh, in your arm. You'll find yourself missing a lot otherwise. Uh, so that's just something if you're maybe a little more in the upper intermediate or more advanced, then you can try those. Sliding down, it's essentially the exact same thing. You wanna pick a note and slide it down. Again, the whole point is to get it fast enough that you don't lose sustain on that, which that's what's gonna happen. If you notice that the note is kind of deadening as you travel to it, whether you're going up or down, uh, it's because you're not going fast enough. So you need to increase that speed. Because every time you travel over that fret, it's like works kind of like a speed bump and it's gonna just slow you down each time. Instead, you do it fast enough and I'm pushing at the same strength the whole time. I'm not releasing and sliding down. It's the same strength I'm pushing down on the note both ways. All 
All right, so the next thing we're gonna look at is bending. And bending is one of those things that just kind of goes hand in hand with a guitar and specifically guitar solos. You can probably think of a million legendary guitar solos where bending is a very important part of that solo. And the cool thing about bending is it's one of those areas that you can really kind of start adding your own personality to your guitar playing. That's because everybody bends just a little bit different. They kind of all have their own unique sound. Now, the number one technique tip I have for you when it comes to bending, which is essentially just pushing the string up or pulling the string down so that it raises in pitch, uh, is to reinforce the finger that you are bending with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this note right here and we're gonna practice bending it up to this note right here. Now, if I were to do this without reinforcing with any other fingers, so if I were to just use this finger, the third finger, which is probably the one you're going to be bending with, and you try and push it up, it takes a lot of strength to be able to bend it with just the one finger. So what you wanna do is you wanna take these other two fingers back here, and if you use your pinky instead, you can put all three behind there if you want, but you put them on the same string on the frets behind, and because those aren't gonna make a sound, because the highest fret is the only one that will make a sound, you can just use them to push with this finger, and essentially, it's gonna make things a lot easier. Instead of pushing with one finger, you're pushing with all three, so. Now there are a million videos on YouTube teaching you how to just do a basic bend like this. You don't need me to show you how to do that. You can find that everywhere. What I wanna focus a little bit more on is something that I like to call like micro bends. I don't know what the actual term for it. It might be that. Uh, and essentially what we're doing when we are doing a micro bend is instead of traveling to the next note, we're actually just pushing it up so that it doesn't quite reach the next note. And this is really cool because it kind of gets your guitar playing to just be a little bit more expressive, maybe a little bit more voice-like. Uh, and an example of that would be if we were to play this note here and we were to go, let's say we play that little lick right there. What we can do is we can go, And all I'm doing, I'm not even going. And it could sound really cool when you're incorporating it into your licks, right? The key here that I found is kind of learning how to choke off those notes if you can. It could be a little bit challenging. But what I'll do is I'll release pressure on that note and then mute it with my other hand rather than going rather than doing something like that it's more like another thing about these micro bends is you kind of want to do them pretty quick uh, usually as you're passing over that note uh, if you linger on it a little bit too long because that note is not from within the key usually it's going to sound a little bit funky so again go over it quickly and kind of work on getting that technique up to speed before you start incorporating it into your playing Next up, I wanna talk about single string melodies and ultimately horizontal playing. Now, I have an entire video that I did recently dedicated to playing horizontally, but essentially the concept is instead of thinking in these boxes that we tend to play guitar solos in, so whether that be the pentatonic box or like a major or a minor scale, that's like three note per string, uh, but still traveling vertically up the strings, what we're gonna do is we're gonna travel horizontally up a string. So we're gonna move up and down the actual fretboard. And what this does is it's a way to hit some of the same notes that you would maybe play in a lick, a pentatonic lick vertically, but doing it horizontally is gonna make it more voice-like. Now again, in that lesson, I talked about players like Derek Trucks who play slide, and they do a lot of melodies along one string because it just has a different sound and a different feel. The most important thing about incorporating this into your playing is sliding. So the very first technique we talked about, uh, and so a lot of the time for it to sound really good, you can't go, you kinda gotta go, And the best place to start when it comes to playing a scale horizontally like this is to start with the G string. And the reason for that is because if we're playing the key of C major or A minor, they're the same key, and we're playing from this position, which is like our home bass, 
right? That basic minor pentatonic scale shape. Well, this note right here is a C, and we know that C major is basically our key, our relative major key. So we can just follow our major scale formula up from there. So we know already how to follow that scale up, and we can even go down. Now, if you wanted to take this a step further, you can do this on the B string as well, which is honestly my favorite place to play these horizontal scales and melodies. Uh, the only thing that you have to remember is that from within this home bass scale shape, this would be starting at a different point in the scale. So we can't just follow our regular uh, major scale formula like the two, two, one, two, 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 one. Instead, you'd have to remember C, D, E, C, D, E. We're starting at a different point in the scale. So it would look a little more like this. If it's something that you like the sound of and you do want to add this into your playing, I'd encourage you to watch that other video of mine because I do like a full deep dive on the technique and on doing a bunch of things like that. Okay, so next up we've got double stops. And I feel like double stops, the name double stops, makes it sound way more intimidating than it actually is. Because all a double stop is, is it's playing two notes at a time. So instead of playing one note inside of a scale, you're just playing. And it doesn't have to be two notes that are right next to each other either. It can just be two notes together. That right there is just another example of double stops. Uh, and this is something that I use in my playing all the time. You've probably heard me play this little riff that I do. All I'm doing there is I'm just playing. Two notes at a time and palm muting at the same time. Now a really easy way to start incorporating this into your playing, and probably my favorite way, is to imagine barring all the way along this part of your shape doesn't matter what key you're playing in. If you understand the home bass concept, which is something I talk about in another video, I always basically base everything around our traditional minor pentatonic scale shape and just kind of build out from there. Uh, but if we play this right here, so in our key, A minor or C major, and you just imagine you're essentially barring the whole thing, we're not actually gonna bar the whole thing. And then all you have to do is because all these notes are allowed, whenever you play one of these other notes, you can go, So when you're first using double stops, don't think too much about the relationship between the two notes because there are intervals happening when you play a certain two notes with another two. Don't worry about it too much as long as the two notes are from the scale that you're playing and then the two notes that you go to or if you just stay on two notes and then go to one note, however you decide to do it, just make sure that all of those notes are from within the scale and then you're gonna be safe no matter what you do. So when it comes to speed, I think this is a bit of a controversial topic when it comes to the guitar, because there's so many, especially like on Instagram and TikTok, so many amazing, super fast guitar players out there. And ultimately, I just kind of want you to ask a question to yourself, and that is, who am I playing for? And am I just playing to try and impress other guitar players? Because that is very valid. And if you want to impress other guitar players, then a whole bunch of speed might be right for you. And you might want to sit down with a metronome and really work that speed up. But but using speed as a tool is something that's totally different when you're just trying to play for an audience. And all I mean when I talk about speed is I don't mean, oh, hey, try and play this scale as fast as you can. What I'm talking about is varying the speed of what you play so that it kind of creates some layers of interest and dynamics. So instead of just playing at the exact same tempo, so playing every quarter note or every eighth note and going, Right, that sounds very boring. What I mean when I talk about speed is just changing it up. So if you're gonna start slow,
you can see how I vary back and forth between playing things a little bit on the faster side and then playing things a little bit on the slower side. And what this does is this kind of creates a little bit of a push and a pull, and it's a little bit more of a natural sound rather than sounding very robotic. Ultimately, this is gonna come down to what your goals are and the style of music that you wanna play. If shredding and playing super fast is something that is in the music that you wanna play or you wanna play to impress other guitar players and other musicians, then yeah, work up your speed and work on incorporating licks that are super fast and impressive into your playing. If you're not trying to do something like that, well then maybe try thinking about speed a little bit different. Think about it as in maybe I need to go slower or maybe here I'm going to go a little bit faster and push myself a little bit. Ultimately just trying to serve the music. Okay, so next up we've got one of my personal favorite techniques and that is using extra muted strings. And there are a few different directions you can go with this, but the first one that I wanna show you is using your extra strings to actually thicken up single notes. And what we're gonna do for this is, let's say we wanna play this note right here in our solo, right? We wanna go like that. That's what we wanna do. But what we can do is if we mute all the other strings around that note and we play all the strings but keep that note fretted okay sounds a little bit weird like that what we can actually do again sounds a little bit weird but what we can do is we can actually thicken up that note so listen to this it just kind of adds a little bit of extra something behind it. And you'll hear when I play a lot of the times, I love adding that extra stuff in there. It's not always gonna be appropriate. You don't wanna overdo it. I probably overdo it sometimes. Uh, but again, incorporate it into your playing and try it out and see if it's adding something that you like. The thing that you kind of have to look out for with this technique, because you are using the finger kind of behind your fretting finger uh, to mute those strings, is you don't wanna land on a harmonic accidentally, so. Right, something like that. If that's gonna be the case, you need to make sure that you move that muting finger away from those natural harmonics because a lot of times, especially if they're not gonna fit into the key, it's gonna sound pretty nasty. So you do need to be careful of that. And something that you'll see me do is instead of just using the one finger behind, I'll use my thumb a lot to help with that muting. Ultimately, how you incorporate this is totally up to you. Now, the other muted string technique that I wanna talk about is a little bit more aggressive, but it is raking. And what that is, is in between the things that you play, you can actually use something called a rake, and all you're doing for that, it can sound very harsh, is raking the strings in between what you're playing. So instead of using the muted strings as you play the note, this one, you're using the muted strings in between the notes that you wanna play. And this isn't so much a rhythmic kind of in between, right? We're not doing that. Instead, we're kinda Definitely something that can be overused and be a little bit much, I would say, for some people. But it is something you can incorporate. I know in some heavier styles of music, they like to use it a lot as well. And all we're doing here to make this technique come through is muting our strings again with our left hand. And then we're kind of digging in our pick more. And instead of going quickly over the strings, we're going a little bit slower. However, I'm making sure that instead of just relaxing my grip and letting my pick glide over, I'm kind of pinching down a little bit harder and just letting more of the tip hit the strings. Right, a little bit more of an aggressive sound. Up next, we've got another one of the kind of quintessential guitar solo techniques, which is vibrato. And this is another place where a lot of guitar players can kind of create their signature. Uh, when you listen to a lot of your favorite guitar players, you'll notice, ah, their vibratos all sound a little bit different, whether that be speed, how wide the vibrato is. But what I wanna talk about in this video is less so how to start using vibrato because that's pretty straightforward, essentially. You're just shaking the note. The one piece of advice I will say is try and make it come from your wrist rather than your finger. It's typically a bad habit for a lot of players to try and shake with their finger on a note. Uh, depending on the finger that you use, it's a lot easier for it to come from the wrist. So whether that be shaking the neck of the guitar a little bit and pushing up with your hand and your wrist, 
or if you're playing with this one, almost turning like a doorknob. So a little bit more like that. That's gonna give you a little bit smoother of a vibrato, but more what I wanna talk about is where you should apply that vibrato because you can't put vibrato on every single note. It's gonna sound ridiculous. So if you imagine a singer, a vocalist, when they're singing, they're not applying, well, most of them at least, are not applying vibrato to every single note that they sing. Usually what they'll do is they'll sing a phrase and then either to add emphasis to that final note or a longer note in the phrase, they will then apply that vibrato before they sing those other notes that maybe don't have vibrato on them. And learning when to turn the vibrato on and off is key to making your solo sound good because overdoing the vibrato sounds bad, no vibrato at all sounds also bad. So you kind of want to find the sweet spot. And the best way to think about this is to think about it like a voice. So when you play a phrase, which you should never be playing all the way straight through, right? You should leave room for the notes to breathe. There should be spaces. This even goes down to what we were talking about, about speed. Sometimes you want to slow things down a little bit. Well, when you land on a note for emphasis and things like that, that is where you want to be applying that vibrato. When you're first doing it, it is gonna require you to really think about it actively as you're playing. Okay, I wanna apply vibrato here because it makes sense. But as you kind of get more and more comfortable playing, you'll find that you'll naturally start placing your vibrato in the right places and then using things like micro bends or slides and the other notes to keep those interesting as well. So squiggles are one of my favorite techniques. I love using them. Uh, they're used a lot by players like Chris Buck and Mateus Asado. And all we're doing for a squiggle, I actually don't know if that's what they're actually called, but we're gonna call them squiggles because I've heard people call them that before, uh, is all we're doing for that is essentially it's a very quick slide up and a quick slide down all at once, so up and down. So if we were to take this note right here, all we're doing is just that. The vibrato there is not important. It's more about the going up and the going down. And all of it is coming from one pick stroke. So, if you go too slow with your squiggle, then you're gonna lose that momentum again, right? That sustain on that string is gonna die off, it's gonna sound a little choked off, and you're gonna hear that fret noise. Again, I'm applying the same amount of pressure down on the strings when I do it. And what I found is if you wanna get the speed up, it's actually quite a different technique from a traditional slide because if you're only sliding one fret, you would assume that you're gonna use that thumb as kind of a lever point, as a fulcrum, to go up and back down, right? And it's gonna come from your hand. But to get it quick, I've actually found it's easier for it to come more from the arm. So it's barely moving my arm itself, but I can feel myself engaging muscles up here in kind of the elbow and forearm area. So if you're finding yourself struggling with getting it up to speed, maybe try closing your eyes and really think about what parts of your arm you're engaging. And if you don't feel it kind of coming from up here in your arm as well as the hand, then you might wanna make a few adjustments. Now the next level of this little squiggle technique is to combine it with a double stop. And the best place to do it is right here on these two notes from within our A minor minor or C major pentatonic scale shape, right there, that note and that note. We bar them. You definitely need to do this with one finger. It makes it much easier. And you can use your pinky, that finger, that finger, it doesn't really matter, whatever's easiest. And you pick the two notes, you slide up and slide down, so. And if you wanna take it even a step further, you can actually incorporate it into a bend as well. And how that works is essentially you're gonna bend your note up and then you're gonna do a squiggle at the top of your bend, and as it comes down, you're gonna go back down. So essentially it's gonna look like this. I can try to do it slow. You kinda of have to do it all fast in one motion, so you're gonna push up. Sounds terrible like that, but that's essentially the technique. So because as soon as you do the squiggle, you're gonna release the pressure of pushing the string up and doing the bend, uh, and all together, I'd say that sounds pretty cool. All right, so ghost notes can be applied to the guitar in a few different ways, but essentially all you're doing is playing some stuff 
in between the important standout notes. So when you're playing a solo, there are some notes that are gonna come through. Right, those notes come through nicely. But what you can do is you can kind of add some ghost notes. Usually these are muted strings. They kind of work the best because they're not gonna get too in the way. So a little example of adding these would be something like this. I'm doing is adding a little extra rhythmic texture and if you pay really close attention to a lot of guitar players you'll actually notice they're adding these little rhythmic embellishments kind of just as a way to support the more interesting notes that they're kind of making stand out right if you listen to a drummer and you really focus in on the snare you'll notice that a lot of the times they're not just playing that one strong beat on the snare they're actually playing little ghost notes in between those strong beats on the snare as well and it just kind of makes everything sound more complete and makes those standout notes feel more supported another example of this is there's a country band that i sometimes play with and one of their songs has a lick that sounds kind of like this And what I will do is I will add some extra ghost notes, even though those are the main standout notes, and maybe just listen to me play it, because it's kind of hard to explain, and see if you can pick them out. So the final technique here is really cool and it's actually quite easy to start incorporating into your playing. The music that I play and the music that I enjoy doesn't really involve the very technical tapping. It's very cool to watch and it's very impressive, but it's just not a technique that I have developed yet. However, this technique is very easy and even if you've never tapped before or you aren't into tapping, it's something that you can start doing. And essentially all you need to do is whatever note that you want to play, or emphasize in this case, right? We'd want to emphasize a note. Let's use this note right here in the shape we've been using for the whole lesson, uh, this C note right here. And all we need to do is we need to find the exact same note up 12 frets so that we make an octave. So it's that note on the 17th. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our middle finger uh, because it kind of has the most strength. It's probably the easiest to do this with, especially if you're still holding a pick. And we're just gonna tap. Now you need to tap quite hard and quite fast as well. Otherwise the harmonic is just not going to come out. So it should sound like this. Just like that. And the more gain that you have on your guitar, the more that harmonic is going to come out. So if you're playing very clean like I am, it's probably not gonna be a super strong harmonic. Now, the main thing here, again, other than hitting quite hard and quickly, uh, is it's actually best to hit on the metal fret or just slightly behind the metal fret rather than in between the frets. Uh, if you do that and you do hit in the right spot, you'll find, if I go back, you'll find that there is a sweet spot that you kind of want to aim for. And you can do this to any note on the entire fretboard. So you could do it on any string. You find that note, you just go up that full octave and you tap in that spot and you're going to get that harmonic. You can even apply vibrato to the original note once you've played the harmonic. It sounds really cool. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. If you guys do have any questions, please make sure you leave those in the comments below and I'll be sure to go down there and answer them. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please also consider subscribing to the channel here on YouTube. I release a new guitar video just like this one every single week. Once again, if you do want the notes for this lesson, they'll be available to Patreon and channel members. There'll be links to all that stuff in the description below. With all that said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.